Hey, it's Willie back again. A couple weeks ago, you watched me do a point-to-point -point install using the Ubiquiti Lightbeam M5, and I mentioned how easy it was to put this this guy together. Uh, so we're going to do a, a quick video to show you how to put it together. We'll unbox it, take a look. And you will notice that it says it's CPE, so Customer Premise Equipment. But you can do point-to-point -point with these, and I will tell you that for $49 a side, if you know if you're not if you don't need AC and you can work in 5 gigahertz and you need about 100 megabits, this thing's really the way to go. 49 you can't beat that. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and open it up. Potter of Ubiquity gear. Here's the quick start guide. And let's see what else. Pipe clamp. And what exactly do they call this part? I think they call this part the feed receiver. So you have the feed receiver, and it's got a, a level built into it. My audience is here watching me. And, uh, what was it? All right. Nope, don't get in the video. All right, what else comes in the package? Then we've got the power cord. Got this little... Little, little itty bitty PoE injector. Isn't that thing cute? Yeah. Look how little that is. So that's a, that's a little ubiquity power injector. And let's see. Then this is officially called uh, the antenna feed. So this guy sticks off the front. You got LED indicators. There's your Ethernet port. Then you have the, what is this officially called? The ball joint mount with the lock nut. So uh, I'm just going through, you know, we don't always call things what Ubiquity officially calls them when we're in the field. And so I'm actually looking at the quick start guide, so that's kind of where this is, this is coming from. Then underneath, have, I would call this a reflector. Uh, what are they calling it? Yeah, they're calling this the reflector assembly. So there's actually three pieces in there. We're going to open this up in just a minute. And then something that uh, in the quick start guide that Ubiquity mentions, and see if I can get this piece of it right here, is they talk about for extra stability to use a to attach four M three by four self tapping screws to the assembly, but they are not included. So we actually did go to the hardware store, and I keep these on hand at the office. But uh, I don't know if you can hear that, there are eight. Since I have two of these units, I'm going to be installing. There are eight of those screws in here. I'll show you how that goes. So there are some very important things that are in the, the Quick Start Guide. The Quick Start Guides are excellent. You know, they have some really good information, so we'll go over a couple of the things that are in the Quick Start Guide. Um, we'll do that here in just a minute. Then, actually, let's, uh, let's get to it. One more thing. When you do mount these, Please make sure that your equipment is grounded. Please make sure you're using tough cable, tough connectors. Everything is uh, hooked up and good to go. That way you can be sure that your warranty is good. So I think the first thing that I want to do, you know what, let's, let's go how they have the instructions in the quick start guide. So we're going to take the reflector out of the package. Oh, you'll need to put the screws in. You'll probably need a, a Phillips screwdriver. And in shop class, my shop teacher would be really upset with me because, you know, the screwdriver is not technically a cutting tool, but it did a really good job of opening the cellophane on this package. So you can see that the reflector has three pieces. And just by looking at it, you can kind of guess how this guy's going to go together. So I'm just going to lay it like that. The first thing that I'm going to do is 
I'm going to snap these guys together. And it is slotted. I don't know if you can see that. It's, it's slotted right there. So we're actually going to put these together and then slide it down. And that, that side of the reflector is on. You can see this side is slotted too. We're going to do the exact same thing. I'm trying to keep this on camera, so if I look a little a little unsteady. And man, that, that was really easy. It was really easy. And this thing, you know, it can handle, I don't know what the wind, the wind load for this guy is. We can probably find it on, online, but I wouldn't be putting it in real high winds. I always recommend putting these, these other screws in, and we're going to do that here in a minute, or at least we are going to attempt it. The next thing that they want us to do in the instructions is they want us to we put the side reflectors on. They want us to put the feed receiver on. A very important note on this is when you do this, do this part by hand. Do not lay the reflector down and push from the back. You can really mess up your gear if you do that. So before we put those screws in, we'll go ahead and we'll put this guy on. And you can see that it's it's slotted and it's uh, slotted here as well. There's a couple little holes here. So it's it's kind of really, you'd have to really work at it to screw this up. And make sure that your Ubiquiti logo is up uh, on the access points on the, the Unifies. It was the, the U uh, upright like that would give you the proper polarization. I'm assuming that that's probably true for this device as well. So we're going to go ahead and we're just going to snap this guy together. It's a little harder to, to tape tape this and make sure that I'm, I'm getting a good video and put this together. So... Everything is snapped together so you can see how everything came to the front. Now, I do want to put those those extra screws in. Set that guy down. We'll do one at a time. And uh, if I drop one and I cuss, we'll cut it out of the video. We'll redo it. But these guys are not, you know, these are not real big, real big screws that we're dealing with. Set the other one down here. Okay, we got our screws in. I don't know if you can see that. We got those in, so it's going to take a major force to to knock this uh, knock this thing apart. The next thing the instructions want us to do is actually attach attach the uh, ball joint mount to the feed receiver by turning the lock nut clockwise by hand. Do not tighten the nut. Now in the video you saw that I actually put this on the pole first and then I adjusted. So, but it says not to, to tighten it, so we're not going to tighten it. We'll just, we'll just make sure there. The next thing they want us to do is insert the antenna feed. And so this is, this is key, this is slotted, so it should only fit in one way. And you should hear it snap. I don't know if you're going to hear it on the camera or not. There was that little pop right there. So now this thing is basically ready to go up on a pole. Uh, to, you run your Ethernet cable. You pinch this, this guy right here to uh, loosen this. Let me see. I tighten it too tight. You just pinch this, and this this guy will uh, open up so you can get your cable in there. There's a little slot cut. Like I said, make sure that you use that you're using tough cable, that you're using the connectors, that you're using the grounding connectors, that everything's grounded and ready to go. And then you've got your level when you're siding things up. The the PoE adapter. I don't know if you know how these work. So I'll just cover this quickly. Uh, if you're using an edge switch or some sort of a switch that can provide the, the passive 
uh, PoE that this needs. This is not a high power device. Then, then you probably won't use this. If you're doing a point to point, you may use this. So what you're going to do, your Mickey Mouse ear power cable is going to plug in to this side. And then if you're going straight to a computer or if you're going to a switch or a firewall, you're going to take a cable from the LAN port. And so that's either going to go to the computer on the other side, the switch, the firewall. And this one labeled PoE, that's what's going to plug in into your antenna and actually power the device. I hope you like this video. Please subscribe to the channel. Please give a thumbs up. Ask any questions. I'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. Configuration on this and the other unit. Um, and then if you noticed in the background of this video there might have been a liquid nitrogen holding tank so come back for videos on that. Thanks again for watching. Please subscribe, give a thumbs up, and we'll see you at the next video.